is okay. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. I'm Ellen. This is Tiska, who's been helping me a lot. Um, we're going to answer some questions that Michael sent us. Uh, Tiska is going to start by giving you a brief overview, and then I'm going to explain in my own words a bit about my own current situation. So we're going to start with Tiska. Thanks. Um, all right, so as a whistleblower of a global pedophile network and satanic ritual abuse with her perpetrators in every or even in the Justice Department, you can imagine that they rather see her gone or as weak and dependent as possible. So her life is in serious danger. She has been gradually kicked out of the system, now unable to just get a job, rent a house, uh, receive government funding, receive basic health care, etc. On top of that, she has been hunted, poisoned, harassed, and had many attacks on her life. She's been thrown off Facebook, hacked in multiple ways, uh, digital digitally sabotaged, you name it. And I can't go into all the details now, but that means that for safety reasons, she cannot just stay on anyone's uh, private property in a guest room. She needs to be able to leave on her own as soon as possible when needed. She can stay in a dorm with multiple people. And for health and recovery reasons, she needs a good bed and a solid safe room that can be locked. She tried to get back into the system, to start from scratch, but so far it all failed. And she's still healing from all the trauma, at the moment mostly physically. So she is in need of the basics, like healthy food, healthcare, and a good and safe place to sleep. That unfortunate, unfortunately means hotels most of the time. That's the safest, because many other there are many other guests, so it's more difficult for network to pull tricks like poisoning, Wi-Fi blocks, power outages or other accidents. Staying on private properties in countryside areas, for example, seems great, but is rarely an option because it's just way more dangerous, not just for Ellen. She had tried it before and that failed miserably. So if you want to donate, please visit eyesonallen.com and on the homepage you'll see Ellen's bank information. Be mindful of the fact that we have to make the flow of donations public. This way the donations are most likely to actually come through. Because if everyone can check if their money came through, it's harder for network to block or sabotage the money flows. It will simply draw too much attention and make Ellen seem too credible. And those are two things that Network wants to avoid at all times. Since we started to post donation overviews, the money sabotage really diminished. Transparency is key. It's why we started the whole Eyes on Ellen thing. We cannot do these things hidden or in the dark anymore because it will bite you in the ass eventually. Um, Um, <clears throat> since a lot of you are not from the Netherlands, I would like to explain a little bit about my current situation. So what I've been doing in these past few months is I've been creating a shitload of art when I was in a hiding place to at least establish that I'm very well capable of making beautiful paintings. Um, the aim was to sell those to provide for myself. But the minute I try to open a website so I can sell my art, uh, I'm unable to create a website, access the website. If I post it on YouTube, people are not able to respond on YouTube. Um, the only way I've been able to sell a few paintings is because people had contacted Tiska and Tiska then contacted me. Um, I went to the local government in the place that I had stayed for f five months where people knew me as a very normal person. 
um, try to get help. The most difficult thing about this is that I've been trafficked to people who are very high up in the Dutch Justice Department, like really high up. So going to the police, I've tried it. I've tried to press charges in the Netherlands, in Spain and in Ireland. Um, but this always ends up in me either having to run because I would not be alive the next day or they flat out refuse. Um, so for all Americans, just to explain, in the Netherlands, the minute you say anything about a high political officer being involved in a child trafficking network or anything about satanic ritual abuse, that is considered something that either does not exist, satanic ritual abuse, or that is so sensitive that they have a special department. So no matter what police department I would go to, first you would get a normal police officer, but then they are instructed from higher up to immediately direct your... Like the pressing charges, you cannot do that with them. You are referred to their special department. And the same goes for mental health care. Um, all the organizations that the Netherlands has to help people out with housing, homelessness or stuff like this have a requirement that you're required to accept the help of a licensed psychiatrist the minute you express that it's about high up politicians or satanic ritual abuse you're referred to specialists who are trained to do this but due to Dutch law this also means that you um, give up your life to them, so they will then have a say on your life, which means that if they are buying the network, if they work for the network or are corrupt in any way, they can give you an, it's called in Dutch, an inbewaring plaatsing. Um, it's like being on hold, which literally means you lose the right to have the decision on your own medical uh, choices and you do not get to decide what happens to your body so you can be locked up indefinitely and be drugged against your will um, when i went to the local government to ask for help all of the options they came were either go to the police i said i cannot go to the police because they are my problem go to the shelter but the shelter um, has required that i at least have to sign that i will agree to uh, their psychiatrists on the long run if they feel the need to it, which is ridiculous because I told them right in the very first day that that is not an option because those are the people that are the most dangerous to me. Um, I cannot send emails, my emails get blocked, my phone gets blocked, my Wi-Fi gets cut off, my bank statements are changing. So the coffees that I've been drinking every day at normal little restaurants so that I would have a paper trail of where I was and people who can prove that I was there is now also in jeopardy because my Dutch bank account is changing all the dates of my uh, bank trip statements. Um, I've currently booked through the help of donations of normal people. I've booked a hotel in Amsterdam. I'm going to stay in this area because there's a lot of hotels. So it's harder for them to block hotels. Um, I've paid for my own accommodation now until Tuesday. I have money for one more day. And after that, if no money comes, I'm on the streets and they got me. So Despite of what people will want you to believe that I'm enjoying staying in hotels, it's a fucking nightmare. I'm physically very unwell. I need to see a doctor quite urgently because the poisoning that happened in Spain twice has really destroyed something in my abdomen that I'm still recovering from. And ever since I was a kid, I have really bad joint pains. So being on the run with a backpack that is 20 kilos also means that I have to pick accommodations that I can access by foot. 
which means that it has to be within 500 or meters or one kilometer of a public transport point, like a train or a bus stop. Because I also have to take a lot of shit with me wherever I go. I cannot leave my phone, my food, my phone chargers, all that stuff in hotel rooms because they will get infected or I get drugged again. So I have to carry a lot of weight with me even when I go grocery stop shopping, which makes this whole um, process quite complicated. And on top of that, despite of what you might think, hotels really usually have shitty beds. So I'm very often in a lot of pain and hardly able to walk or I can walk, but it's difficult. Um, we're being targeted on many fronts. Um, there's also quite a lot of awesome people helping. Oh, thank you, thank you for that. But since uh, we want to spread like the risk and make it as hard for network as possible to target people that are helping me, that's why I thought my current living situation means that it costs about 6,000 euros a month for honestly survival. Like having a place to stay at night, having food, I buy food daily because I can't store it um, because that makes it too easy to drug me, which they've done on many, 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 many occasions. Uh, so the idea is to find 6,000 people that are willing to donate one euro a month to me and keep doing that so that I have a, an income to at least secure my basic needs for shelter. And when I've secured that and I'm at least safe for the night and not constantly on the run and trying to figure out where I'm going to sleep tonight and how I'm going to do this stuff, then more room opens up to tell more about what happened. I had previ previously shared that everything on my Facebook. I did that on a daily basis because all my attempts to write a book or like make videos to compromise my story have all been deleted, uh, night access. And when I was in Ireland, they completely kicked me out of my Facebook. So I am no longer able to access my own Facebook account nor close it. This happens with a lot of profiles I make. So it's a pattern where I make a profile and I get locked out of my own profile. And then often they've done this before, they will take over their profile and start posting really nasty shit or nasty comments to people where people think that it is me uh, destroying my reputation and making people turn away and no longer helping me. So that's why we're doing this together and that's why a lot of the communication goes through Tiska and not my own. Uh, well, the only social media I, I have left now is YouTube, but it's basically useless. Because <laughs> they'll let me post videos of my art, you can find those. Um, but the minute I want to say anything that is more sensitive, the video just gets deleted. Uh, comments get deleted, people are unable to like videos, so a lot of people want to like them, but then let me know th through other people, like, hey, I can't, I can't even like your videos. Or the uh, video just goes black. Oh yeah, or the video goes black, or the profile goes down. Uh, making it look like nobody's interested, nobody cares. So don't let them fool you. A lot of people care. They're just digitally trying to make it look like nobody's sticking up for me, nobody gives a shit, which is untrue. <laughs> um, yeah, so for now I'm sort of safe, or at least have a place to stay until Wednesday, and after Wednesday my funds are completely gone. Um, so that's why we chose to do this first, because I'm very willing to tell a, a lot more about what happened and who did it and how I healed that and how I keep my mind sane and my focus. Emotionally, I'm doing pretty okay uh, compared to a few years ago. Uh, that part of my healing has gone very well, but physically I'm a mess. But I can't share any very dangerous stuff if I don't even have a place to stay for the night. Um, oh, yeah, and the entire region in the eastern part of the country where I had asked for help with the local government. 
just to give you an idea of what happens the minute I have access to somebody who actually could help me. Um, for all those appointments that you have to make with all these organizations that are trying to find out if they can help you, you have to be in that region. So you get a letter address. It's not a real address, but you at least are like registered. We succeeded in doing that. But that also means that if you want to apply for welfare or any of the stuff that you need, you have to be in that region. So the minute you leave the region, you no longer are entitled to that help. So what network then does is try to get me out of that region. Um, so for instance, on my phone, that means that the minute I try to look for a hotel in the eastern part of the Netherlands, there are no hotels. So I will look on Google Maps and there are no hotels visible at all. Not just that they are fully booked, but they don't just don't show up in the no. results. So I, even if I have internet access, it's very limited. There are subjects that I cannot Google. Um, booking will, when I was in the run, on the run in France and I was looking for a hotel in Lyon, which is a giant city, booking literally said there are no hotels in Lyon. So I found a way around that. So, but just to give you an idea, uh, if you cannot call people, uh, if the phone gets blocked right away, the only option you have is physically walking to somebody's station, um, which is quite demanding for me because I'm very limited in my energy and pain levels in how much I can walk on a day. And it takes so much time. So if I can't, if I'm in a hotel and I can't call the local government, I have to walk there, which is another half an hour, go to the desk, find them. And because the local governments in the eastern part of the country said they cannot help me or they can only help me if I accept going either to the police or going to uh, psychiatrists that are of the network, which is not an option, then unfortunately they can't help me. And I was unable to find any more housing or accommodation for the night, so I literally had to leave that region, which also means that I most likely have lost all of the art that I made five months. <laughs> so I'm really sorry for people who wanted to buy a painting. But I think it's not the first time that I had to leave everything behind or that everything gets destroyed. But I'm not sure if I will be able to access that. I, I kind of think I won't. So it's pretty much lost at this point. Um, we're pausing this video because I get emotional. Um, one thing I forgot to say is that there are also quite a lot of people who have offered me a place to stay that would be an option because they live in the city center, for instance. But I have a hard rule that I do not stay over at anybody's house if you have kids. If there's kids sleeping there, it's fucking dangerous and I'm just not doing that because they will use the kids to um, target and manipulate and harm the situation and I'm not going to bring my shit to kids houses so that's why there's a lot of people who are currently helping me that would really want to help me by offering me a place to stay but they have kids that's what I wanted to share And then one more thing for people who um, really don't have the space to donate at the moment and still want to offer support and help. Um, an idea is to at least tell two people in your environment that you trust about Ellen, show the website, share her story, um, share this video perhaps and um, Maybe they can donate, and if and if not, they can find two people who they can tell. And imagine um, how far that can go. It's the pay it forward way, right? We all know. And it's fractal because it grows exponentially. Yeah. You can you can make a little um, math um, 
You can make a math for you. Like if I tell two people and they tell two people and they tell two people and those people tell two people, within a few iterations, you're very fast on a million people who know. So that really helps more than you might um, feel. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And thank you for helping us. Because, can I close the conversation? Sure. Okay. Despite the fact that I'm asking for my safety and that I feel I deserve a life and this needs to end, there are so many children right now who are in it and being trafficked. And they take the kids from schools and daycares. They, this network has their own schools and their own daycares. So there's a reason why the Netherlands is like the top number one country where 70% of the child porn worldwide comes from this country. So we're not just asking, but there's proof of my child porn. If I disappear and if all the people who open their mouths are just being killed off disappear, then those kids have no chance. Like it really needs to stop. Yeah.